A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Hi guys and welcome back. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Molly and today I want to take you on a little trip down memory lane to look at some of my favorite summertime recipes that I've shared here on the channel before that I think we need to remember now that summer's finally kicked in. And I've compiled seven delicious recipes to share with you today so I think we need to dive right in. And the first recipe I want to share is a ceviche inspired salad with courgette, peach and lots of zesty lime. It is super fresh and juicy so perfect for the summer and it serves really great as a starter salad or a side. Let's take a look. I'm going to show you how to make a ceviche inspired salad that starts with slicing up some zucchini or courgette. I'm using a cheese slicer for this but you can use a mandolin or just cut them finely as well. I'm using two colors, but you could use one, of course. Then to spice things up, I'm going to chop up a jalapeno pepper finely. And you can use another type of chili pepper if you want, or you can use chili flakes, whatever you have on hand. chopped up pepper is going into a dressing that's really lime heavy but first I drizzle in a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and then I'm ready to zest the lime into the bowl and I'm also going to squeeze in a whole lot of lime juice. season the dressing with salt and then I give it a good mix before pouring half of it over the zucchini or crochet and the rest I'm gonna keep for the next part of this salad. Once I've poured the dressing over the zucchini I'm going to coat them really well so mix them really well and then leave them in the fridge for one to three hours to soak up all that flavor. To go over the zucchini I'm going to make a little salad that's finely chopped and I'm making this with peach, one of my favorite summer fruits. So I chop it up finely and then I'm also going to chop up some tomato, cucumber, onion, cilantro or coriander as well as avocado to go with this. And this reminds me a little bit of like a salsa but also is reminiscent of a ceviche. For those of you who don't know what ceviche is, it's actually Peru's national dish, but it's made in other places in South America as well. As far as I know, it's often served as a starter and it's often made with white fish. But of course, I'm not making it with fish, I'm making it with vegetables instead. What makes it reminiscent of ceviche, I would say, is that I'm dressing it with a lot of lime, chili, salt and coriander, which from my research is how it's traditionally made. A combination that's super yummy and if you've never tried it, I hope you will. Once I've chopped all the vegetables, I combine them in a bowl and I would like to say that you can actually make this with any type of fruit you want so pineapple would taste really nice in this strawberries which is seasonal here in Sweden now would also be perfect so just let your imagination lead you then I drizzle the rest of the dressing we made over the top of the veggies and I give them a good mix and then I'm gonna leave this in the fridge as well for about one two hours if I have the time then I'm going to layer the zucchini onto a big serving plate and I love how this dish ends up looking. It's such a vibrant, colorful expression. And once the zucchini is all layered out, I'm adding the chopped up salad in little chunks here and there and I finish it off with some fresh coriander. This salad is great as a starter when you're making any type of South American food, I would say. We love to have it as a side with our tacos, but yeah, just let your imagination run wild. Next up, I have a Swedish summer classic for you that we call Skagenröra. And you guys are always asking me for more Swedish recipes. And even though I'm not giving you a new one today, I'm giving you an absolute gem. If you haven't tried it, you really must. 
It's a vegan take on a creamy seafood salad, which probably sounds impossible, but I promise you it's very much like the real thing and it's really yummy. And typically it's eaten on crispy white toast as a starter, but I'm serving it more like a canopy here, but you can serve it any way you like. It's really yummy inside of a baked potato as well. And this video is actually from a few years ago, so it's quite funny to look back on these older videos and see how much we've grown on the channel. Either way, I hope you will like it. To make the skagen röra we're gonna start by chopping up a red onion finely and it's nice to have these small pieces in the salad so make sure you chop it finely and then place it in a mixing bowl. So I'm using one whole red onion there and then I'm also gonna crumble in a block of firm tofu and this block weighs 370 grams so it's quite a big block and I'm crumbling it in with sort of small pieces but not too small because this should be reminiscent of shrimp texture and then I'm also gonna sprinkle in a generous amount of salt because seafood is salty and that's the um, flavor we're trying to emulate and then I'm just mixing the salt into the tofu and tofu absorbs flavors really easily so the saltiness is going to come through nicely and then I'm adding in some dill and I've used frozen that I've thought but you could also use freshly chopped of course and then I'm adding in this seaweed caviar and this I can find in the supermarket here in Sweden but if you can't find it in the supermarket it's usually available at IKEA and I'm adding in the whole jar which is about 100 grams and then I'm gonna grate in some lemon zest and I'm using a microplane for this and grating in the zest from half a lemon and I'm also gonna cut the lemon open so that I can squeeze in one to two tablespoons of lemon juice as well this adds a nice sing and lifts the flavors of the dish Next up, I'm sprinkling in some nori seaweed crinkles and it's just nori seaweed cut into small pieces and I've added about two tablespoons. And then I'm also gonna add in half a cup of vegan mayonnaise. So that's an egg-free mayonnaise. And then I'm also going to add in half a cup of vegan creme fraiche. And this one is oat-based. And I'm adding it all in there and this is what's gonna make the salad really creamy and delicious. Then I'm just gonna mix it all very well together until it's well incorporated as you can see here. And then I'm gonna season it with a little bit of black pepper and some more salt to taste. And then of course I'm just gonna mix it all together well so that all the flavors are well combined and then I'm gonna serve it on this platter and I'll place out my little pieces of cracker bread but like I said you could use pieces of toast or potato halves or anything else you'd like to serve it on. And then I'm just gonna dollop some of the skagen jara onto the bread And then I'm gonna also garnish it with some dill. So I'm just taking some pieces of dill off of this fresh plant and I'm gonna place it onto the little canapes. And in my garden, I also have some kale flowers at the moment. So I decided to use them to decorate the canapes with as well. But you could obviously use any edible flower or just omit them if you like. And it also looks really nice if you dollop on some of that seaweed caviar onto the uh, mixture as well, if you want to make it a little bit more fancy. And that was all from me today with my Swedish classic recipe. I hope you thought that looked yummy and now before we continue on with the other recipes I want to talk a little bit about Squarespace that have kindly sponsored this video. Squarespace is an all-in-one website builder which helps users create a beautiful space to grow their projects and business. Personally, I've used Squarespace to build my food photography portfolio and what I really like about it is that it's really easy, quick and intuitive to use. You really don't need any special skills to make a beautiful looking site. 
While I've used Squarespace to build my portfolio, it has many uses. For example, it's really great for bloggers with tools that allow you to auto post your content to Facebook or Tumblr, as well as get a good overview of your audience and a handle on SEO. It also makes it very easy for you to connect your social media accounts to your site so that your visitors can find you easily. So if you're thinking about creating your own website, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash goodeatings for 10% off your first website or domain. Now let's get back into the recipes. And while we're on the topic of small plates and starter type foods, I want to squeeze in a little bruschetta because I shared it earlier this year, but now we're really in the prime time for this type of dish. It's a bruschetta with a really easy homemade green olive tapenade. And I know I'll be making it several times this summer to have as a starter or share with friends. So what I do first is I slice up a baguette and I'm using four pieces so that we get two pieces each. And then I'm brushing the bread with some olive oil and rubbing it with some fresh garlic. To make it really crispy and delicious, I'm toasting it in the oven at 225 degrees Celsius for about five minutes, but keep an eye on it not to burn. While the bread is toasting, I'm going to prepare the tapenade and I'm using a Greek green olive called Halkidiki, but you could use any type of green olive that you like the taste of. It's good to use one that's a little bit meaty in texture. And I'm putting my olives into the bowl of a food processor. And then I'm also adding in some capers. For a little bit of herby freshness, I'm adding in some fresh flat leaf parsley that I'm just tearing into little pieces. Then I drizzle in some extra virgin olive oil, I sift a whole lemon into the bowl as well, and I squeeze in the juice. To combine it all into a tapenade, I pulse the machine to get it to a good consistency. And this is a little bit individual. I like mine a little bit chunky. spread the tapenade over the bread and then add some fresh colorful tomatoes on top of that and finish off with a little bit of basil. If you wanted to you could drizzle a little bit of olive oil over the top but I think it's fine just like this. So to keep riding the Italian train, I've got a super fresh risotto for you next. And this is a recipe I shared last summer in a three course menu video that I made for summer. Definitely check it out if you want to make a special meal for someone or just want some ideas and I'll make sure to link it in the description box as well. Definitely don't miss out on the vegan eaten mess pavlova that's in that video. It's absolutely an honorable mention. But now let's take a look at my very refreshing but still very creamy lemon risotto. To make this vegan lemon risotto, I start by grating a lot of lemon zest. And I just use my box grater for this, but you could definitely use a zester if you prefer. Then I chop up two small shallots or one large one very finely. And this sort of makes up the flavor base for the risotto, but it's not overpowering at all because lemon is really the flavor profile that we want to shine. And before we start cooking the risotto itself, we need to warm up some vegetable broth. And I'm using water mixed with some vegetable stock powder, but you can of course use carton vegetable stock or homemade vegetable stock is perfect of course. So I just heat that up and then keep that warm while I cook the risotto. So to start the cooking process, I am adding some olive oil to my pot and then I add in the shallots and the garlic and I saute on a low heat just for a couple of minutes or until the shallots turn slightly translucent. And then I'm going to add in my rice and I'm using Arborio rice here, but you could use any kind of rice that suits risotto making. So I measure it out and add it to the pot and then I saute it for another couple of minutes until it's glossy. 
Then I'm going to add in some white wine and I'm definitely no wine expert but I'm using a crisp dry wine for cooking here and that's as advice. So I measured out and added to the pot and then I let it cook off so that it soaks almost completely into the rice before I start adding my broth. And I add the broth ladle by ladle and let the broth soak into the rice every time in between adding more. This will take somewhere between 30 and 35 minutes. So you need some patience here or maybe you can do a sort of active meditation as you stir because you need to keep stirring and moving the rice around as it cooks. This will allow it to get really creamy and lovely. And to circle back a little bit to the wine, if you don't want to cook with wine, you can definitely leave it out. Just add in the equivalent of more vegetable stock and you're good to go. Towards the end of the cooking process, you're going to want to taste your rice before adding the last bits of stock, just to make sure you're not overcooking it. You want the rice to be soft, but not completely mushy. So once it's soft, you can add in some nutritional yeast, as well as most of the lemon zest that you grated in the beginning, and the rest we keep for serving. And then I squeeze in lemon juice as well, and I season with salt and black pepper. I then give it a good mix and I taste it to see if I need to season again, and then it's ready to serve. Ideally you serve the lemon risotto or any risotto really straight away once it's finished cooking because otherwise it has a tendency of getting a little bit gloopy. Then to serve it I sprinkle over the remaining lemon zest, I crack some black pepper over the top and I add a lemon wedge or a couple of lemon slices to squeeze over it. You could also add something green on top if you like to give it some more color. I like to serve mine with some roasted asparagus on the side. We couldn't have a summer food video, I think, without including some Vietnamese summer rolls. They really are the perfect hot weather food with crunchy veggies wrapped in rice paper. I made mine without rice noodles in the rolls, but feel free to add that to make it more filling. And this is another older video that we filmed in our old countryside house. It makes me miss it a little bit, and maybe some of you will recognize it too. To start, I'm going to make the sauce. So I'm combining peanut butter with some soy sauce and some garlic granules. Then I'm just squeezing in some lime juice as well before I give it all a good mix to combine all the ingredients. And if you find the sauce gets a little bit thick, you can add a little bit of water. And then to make the summer rolls, I am dipping these rice papers into water. It's good to use lukewarm water to make them softer faster and then I'm placing that paper onto a cutting board and I'm sprinkling some sesame seeds on top. Toasted sesame seeds are tastier, just a little reminder. And then I'm placing on a lettuce leaf. Onto that I'm gonna place some sticks of cucumber, carrot, bell pepper, spring onion and some tofu. But you could use any vegetables you like here. And I'm also adding in some of that shredded cabbage which I've massaged with lime juice and salt. And in this recipe as well I'm adding coriander but you don't have to if you don't want to. I think summer is a fabulous season because you can have herbs on everything but yeah that's totally up to you. Then I'm rolling the summer roll up just like that and as you can see it sticks a little bit when you're placing it straight onto the wooden board so in a second I'm gonna show you how to make that easier for you. So if you place a damp dishcloth onto your surface and then the rice paper onto that, it's not going to stick as much because everything is moist and won't stick to, to each other. And then you just cut the summer roll in half and place it into your bento box. And for my sauce I'm using the big sauce pot again and just placing the sauce into it and what's nice is that they have lids so it won't spill anywhere and into my snack pot of the other compartment I'm gonna add some sliced strawberries 
and then into the bigger compartment I'm gonna add in some edamame beans and I've just steamed these edamame beans from frozen to make sure they're edible I love these as a snack especially with some flaky sea salt sprinkled over the top so this is my fourth super fresh and summery bento lunchbox idea as we near the end, I couldn't leave out a pasta dish because I think pasta is a really great summer food. And this one utilizes tomatoes, which are just getting good here in Sweden now and are only going to get better. It's actually a vegetable or fruit that I try to make the most of in summer. So here's my garlicky roasted tomato pasta. And now in summer as well, eating fresh tomatoes and cooking with them feels like such a treat as well. So I'm really banking on that in this recipe. And I'm just starting by chopping up some tomatoes. And as you can see, I have different sized tomatoes. So I'm just chopping them to uniform size. Then I'm also preparing the garlic, no surprise there. And I'm just crushing them a little bit and removing the skin. And then we're gonna roast them whole together with the tomatoes. So I pop all the tomatoes as well as the garlic cloves onto a baking tray. And as you can see, I'm using my chopped tomatoes as well as some plum tomatoes as well. And I think it's really nice to mix the tomatoes, but you could use any type of tomato you like. Just chop them if they're big or keep them whole if they're small. Then drizzle some olive oil and sprinkle some salt and black pepper over the top. And then they're ready to roast for about 20, 25 minutes or until the cherry tomatoes are popping open and it's all nice and juicy. In the meantime we're gonna cook our spaghetti in a well salted pot of water with lots of water so that the spaghetti has space to cook and then just pop my spaghetti in there. I'm using a gluten-free corn spaghetti but you could use any kind that you like and that suits you. So then we just wait for the pasta to cook until it's al dente and then we drain it. And I keep some of the cooking water for later and then I put the pasta into a bowl and here you can see the tomatoes all done. So we pop those tomatoes and all those yummy juices into the bowl with the spaghetti. And then I'm gonna drizzle it with some more olive oil and just toss it together to combine. And if you find that the pasta goes a bit dry here, that's when you're gonna use that reserved pasta cooking water, because that's gonna add to the sort of sauce of the dish, and it's also gonna season it with that little bit of salt in the water, or quite a lot of salt, to be honest. But you will also season to taste with salt and pepper as you toss it together. Then it's ready to serve. This is a really simple dish that somehow is still really luxurious to me. I love using these fresh tomatoes, like I said at the beginning. It's nice to use these summer vegetables now that are just bursting with flavor at the moment. So make the most of it. And to top it all off, I like to grate some vegan cheese on top as well as adding some fresh basil. Again, herbs are such a nice summer ingredient, so make the most of it. Put it into anything you can, and then we're gonna finish this off with a crack of black pepper, and that's this final dish done. With such a simple dish, it can be nice to add to the nutritional value with some sides, and I could recommend a bean salad with this, and maybe a green salad, and that would be awesome. So I think we should finish on something sweet, but before we get into this last recipe, I want to share some honorable mentions with you. Recipes that didn't make it into this video, but are great for summer meal inspiration. And first up, I made a salad video a couple of summers ago with some super fresh and vibrant salads that are perfect for summer, so definitely check that out. Also don't miss out on my roasted cauliflower steaks with chimichurri sauce, which would be perfect for the barbecue this summer. Finally, I need to mention my Swedish sandwich cake, which makes a beautiful centerpiece at any summer party or garden birthday party you might be doing this season. Also, it's really fun to make, so maybe you'll even be making it on a rainy day. But now let's have a look at my very easy but beautiful rhubarb galette that will make a really yummy, sweet and tart dessert for any meals you're making this summer. I'm going to start this recipe by making the pastry. So here I'm using some buckwheat flour again, which I'm just sifting into a bowl. And I'm also adding in some almond flour to this. Then 
I'm going in with some coconut sugar again, but you could use caster sugar if you want. And I'm also adding a pinch of salt. And then I'm just gonna mix all these dry ingredients together with a fork. Once it's all incorporated, I'm going to open up my block of vegan butter or vegan margarine and then I'm just going to cut out the piece that I need and then I'm going to sort of shave it into the bowl so that I have thin pieces of the butter in there. And this will help to cut it into the flour when we start mixing it because we don't want to overwork the pastry. Then I'm using a fork to just cut it into the flour or you could use a pastry cutter if you have one, I don't. And when you've gotten most of it mixed into the flour so you can use your fingers gently to create this crumbly texture. Then I'm adding one tablespoon at a time of ice water till I get the pastry moist enough to create a ball and you don't want to use too much water so just use as much as you need and no more then I'm just forming a ball with the pastry and putting it back into the bowl and then I'm placing the bowl in the fridge while I prepare the rhubarb and for this recipe I'm creating a pattern with the rhubarb so I'm cutting it on a diagonal and the pieces are roughly one inches long and when they're all cut up, I'm putting them into a bowl and I'm going to add some cornstarch to this because we don't want the soggy bottom in the pastry and this will help absorb the moisture. And then I'm also adding in some more sugar because rhubarb is tart, so we need to add some sweetener in there. Then I mix it up and set it aside and I am unrolling a piece of baking paper which I put the cooled pastry onto and then I'm putting another sheet on top so that I can roll it out without actually touching the pastry with the rolling pin. And this pastry can crack a little so I just lift the paper off and smooth the edges out and then I keep rolling it into a big circle and you don't want it any thicker than sort of three four millimeters so you have to roll a lot and when it's all rolled out I just lift the paper off and I can start making my pattern with the rhubarb but you don't have to make a pattern like this you can make any pattern you like and um, no pattern at all if you prefer so if you want to make the pattern you just make the rhubarb into sort of v-shapes and you keep filling it out until you're sort of a little more than an inch away from the sides of the pastry and you will need to cut the rhubarb into smaller pieces to fill it out completely Then when you've done your pattern with your rhubarb or your no pattern, you're going to use the baking paper to fold in the edges and create a sort of hand shaped pie. And I like to just squeeze it to make a little rounder and there it is all folded up. And if you want to be fancy, like I decided to, you can brush the sides of the pastry with a little bit of oil and then you can place some slivered almonds onto it. This is a really nice effect and it also adds a nutty crunch to the finished result. And then you're just going to slide the whole thing onto a baking tray and pop it in the oven at 180 degrees for 30 minutes. And after the 30 minutes, you just remove it and you serve it. And it's a really beautiful sort of showstopper when you make the pattern like this. I've had so many compliments on this and I really hope you will like it. So it's really easy to just cut into slices and place a little plate. <laughs> and then I like to serve mine with some vegan vanilla ice cream. But I know you're all creative people and will come up with your own ways of serving it too. And if you do try out any of these recipes and want to share them with me, please remember to tag me on Instagram at Good Eatings. I love to see it when you make the recipes. With that, I will leave you for this time. I really hope you've enjoyed this video as much as we've enjoyed making it. It's been really fun to look back at some of our older videos and what we've thought up to share with you over the years. And as always, I will link all the full recipes down in the description box in case you want to see them written out. And I'll also link the videos that we pulled the recipes from in case you want to watch the full videos and haven't yet. Also, let us know which recipe you are more interested in trying in the comments. We would love to know. And 
uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye.